This week on Channel 8 News, we have more updates on the university's presidential candidates, an interview with Jana Green as a mental health ambassador, campus dining changes, and more. Your Channel 8 News starts right now. Thanks for tuning in to Channel 8 News, the show where we provide the latest news and sports coverage on the Northwest Missouri State University campus and in the Maryville community. I'm Tristan Clark. And I'm Alexis Kuhner. Before we get into this week's stories, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for all the latest news and updates. Over the past few weeks, the Channel 8 News team has done a deep dive on all the university's presidential finalists. The last presidential forum on campus took place last week and our reporter Kirsten Stokes got the coverage. Another presidential candidate forum is in the books for Northwest Missouri State University. On Thursday, Dr. Lance Tatum had his first candidate forum and students and faculty were able to ask him questions about his background and his ideas and goals as potential president. Dr. Lance Tatum is currently serving as the Senior Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs at Troy University. At Troy, he's focused on teaching, research, and public service. Like other candidates, students were focused on asking about enrollment rates and what groundwork needs to be looked at to make improvements for the university. I mean by important, I'm talking about the opportunities that you have that we need to also look at what you don't have that we can get. But it's also about learning about the university, right? It's understanding your traditions and your history and some of the things that are important. Along with other students present, I asked a question about Tatum's differences from other candidates and what makes him the best fit for the job. What outside of that sets you apart from the rest of the candidates that are running for presidency here? Yeah, um, you know, I think it's, it's the internal pieces to what higher education means to me. Mm -hmm. um, my life changed because of education, right? Um, I was on a trajectory that would have never led to this moment. And because I was able to connect with faculty at a university, it changed the way in which um, I lived my life. I spoke with the Executive Student Senate President Elizabeth Modizetti about her overall impression of Dr. Tatum and what she hopes he will accomplish as potential president. So I think Dr. Tatum has many things he could bring to this university. Um, like everything, um, there's always room for improvement, but um, I definitely think he could fit in well here. I think Troy and Northwest have very similar culture to where there's a lot of school pride, um, and I think he could definitely bring that. And I mean, we're always looking for changes to you know, be better and do better, and I do think he could provide a new perspective, which would be really beneficial. The exclusive interview with Dr. Tatum will be posted later this week, so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss it. For the stories that matter to you, I'm Kirsten Stokes with Channel 8 News. Kirsten will interview Dr. Tatum later this week. Kirsten also got another exclusive interview with presidential candidate Dr. Michael Goddard. Here's a clip from that interview. First and foremost, when I kind of talk about what's the first phase of what does that look like, for me, um, my leadership style is, is pretty simple. Mm -hmm. building trusted, authentic relationships with people in a transparent way. So my first, my first goal when I get there is to build relationships with people, uh, hear people, hear kind of where they're at, where they feel like there's opportunities and challenges because you don't want to lose sight of the strengths that are there at an institution right now. And to walk into the door and think you know everything about the institution, no matter how much research you do, is um, would be steering uh, myself and the institution in a direction that perhaps wouldn't be most beneficial short or long term. So mm -hmm. when you're out meeting people, meeting students, faculty, staff, certainly developing strong relationships with with the Board of Regents, but with alumni as well, hearing from alumni in terms of their experiences. One of the things that, you know, I asked students when I was there is I said, what makes you most proud about Northwest? Because you need to hear kind of where that um, where those synergies are, but kind of where that sense of commitment is mm -hmm. from faculty, staff, alumni. So again, meeting people, developing those relationships would be priority number one. After that phase um, happens, which is an ongoing thing, but after yeah. <laughs> that, really kind of think uh, strategically on how do we look for innovative approaches to make sure that um, every student is met where they need to be met at that particular point in time in their journey to make sure 
that no student is kind of left behind in terms mm -hmm. of having those opportunities. So it really fits with what Northwest says, you know, every student every day kind of focusing on students, but really making sure that we take down as many barriers as we can for students to, again, have the opportunity to be successful. For the full interview with Dr. Goddard and for more information, click on the links in the description below or watch Channel 8 News on youtube.com slash KNWT-TV for more updates. When we return, we'll be kicking it over to Bearcat Update with Skylar Stamps. He looks at the Chiefs Super Bowl Parade, interviews mental health ambassador Jaina Green, and more. You're watching Channel 8 News on KNWT. Unlike other organizations on and around campus, here, the students do it all. KNWT is a student-run and student-produced television station. To support this content, you can go to our YouTube channel at KNWT Channel 8. And watch the latest shows or even enjoy blasts from the past. Welcome back to Channel 8 News. Hey guys, we're filming behind the scenes for Creative Services. Come, come check it out. <laughs> here with Creative Services, our job is to promote KWT, give you an in-depth look at our crew members, and shoot behind the scenes of all your favorite shows. This is KWT, and we are Creative Services. Welcome back to Bearcat Update, your show for all things Bearcat sports. I'm your host, Skylar Stamps. Last week, the streets of Kansas City roared with cheers when the Chiefs and their fans celebrated their Super Bowl win over the Eagles 38-35. Chiefs players took a victory lap throughout downtown Kansas City, ending at Union Station with speeches from Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Close to 1 million people filled the streets, and as you can see, some of those fans submitted pictures and videos of their experience at the parade. Leave a comment down below if you can see your submission. MVP! 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 Now focusing on Northwest sports, it was a busy week for the Bearcats. The men's basketball team inches closer to yet another MIAA regular season title with wins over Washburn 66-40 and Missouri Western 68-59. This is their 11th straight victory and the men improved to 25-2 overall and 18-2 in MIAA play. The women's basketball team was also on the road this past week, dropping an overtime game to Washburn 59-62 and a 16-point defeat at Missouri Western 59-75. But on the bright side, Molly Hartnett hit 1,000 career points. Congratulations, Molly. Be sure not to miss the men's and women's basketball games starting at 5.30 on Thursday versus Central Oklahoma inside Bearcat Arena. A prominent figure on the women's basketball team is Jaina Green. The junior forward for the Bearcats is putting in the work not only on the floor, but in the community. I sat down with Green this past week to discuss her role as a mental health ambassador. The St. Francis Foundation has donated over $10 million to the Mosaic Medical Center since 1976. This funding has been used for a variety of projects within the hospital, but as of late, a big focus has been on mental health. At Northwest, two St. Francis mental health ambassadors have been pivotal in stomping out the stigma and raising money for the foundation. Today, I am with Jaina Green, who most people know as a Northwest women's basketball player, but she is also one of the ambassadors for the St. Francis Foundation. It's great to have you here today, Jaina. Thanks. It's awesome to be here. And so to get started, talk a little bit about what the St. Francis Community Initiative really is. Um, so it's basically focused on improving inpatient and outpatient care for like communities in Northwest Missouri, as well as trying to reach the youth in the communities and like uh, kind of get to the root of the problem earlier so it doesn't like spiral later in life. Cool. And then what drew you to be a part of the St. Francis um, Foundation? Did they reach out to you or is this something that you've um, really always been passionate about? I would definitely say I've always been passionate about it, but um, Kelsey Meyer, who works at Mosaic, she's my head coach's wife. She reached out to me back in, I think, August or September and was like, hey, like, 
I know that you have experience in this and I know that you're passionate about it. Like, is there any way that we can get you to do this? And I honestly didn't really have to think about it. It was a no brainer. And then I know that you and Wes Reamer um, participated in a basketball clinic um, over at the rec center and raised over $3,000 for the foundation. Um, how did that get started and how did it go? So it started with me and Wes and then Candace and Alexis Bay were also like huge in planning that and we just knew we wanted to do something that would touch the kids so like anything that is in the community that the youth are in obviously like the parents see it and everybody sees it and like anytime you can get close to people like that is awesome. And then um, how has the St. Francis Foundation really uh, impacted you or helped you? I definitely think it's been a part of my like healing journey while the, while I am healing other people I hope I hope that people are seeing my message like that but I think that one of the steps in healing is like being able to tell your story and help other people so if that's what it's doing that's awesome and then what advice do you have for other student athletes or other students our age that are struggling with mental health um, I would say especially for student athletes it's okay to like not be the hero all the time I think that is something that's really focused on especially with like individual accomplishments and like trying to be your best in all aspects whether it's mentally physically emotionally but when it comes to like your health and especially mentally like it's okay to ask for help well thank you very much dana uh, we appreciate you being here with us today and appreciate all that you have done um, for students and with the saint francis foundation thank you if you want to hear more about Jaina or Wes's story along with the St. Francis Foundation, click on the link in the description below. That's all the time we have here for Bearcat Update. Be sure to tune in next time to stay connected to all things Bearcat sports. When we come back, we'll look at the campus dining changes and some musical performances. You're watching Channel 8 News on KNWT. KNWT for Hire is all about sharing a story, a message, and connecting the community. We cover a multitude of events, both within the university and Maryville. We roll in, we set up, and we capture. We're here to offer an experience, not only for those present, but for all. Hey guys, I'm Garrett Bevins. And I'm Jonas Pilat. Do you like video games? If so, our show Gen 2 is all about video games. We cover gaming releases, news, and play a bunch of different games. So, you should come check our show out. So, I heard you were a camel guy. Oh god, not again. <laughs> Channel 8 News. Last week, Northwest announced a new campus dining partner. Here's what you can expect next fall. Northwest Campus Dining will be undergoing some change before the fall of 2023. There will be a new company taking over Aramark's position in the campus called Sodexo Operations LLC. This new contract brings a lower price for campus dining meal plans for on and off campus students. Muya will be replaced by Buffalo Wild Wings to go. Zen will be replaced by a ghost kitchen, meaning you can order from Mr. Beast Burger and Kadoba on the app. And Einstein Bros will be replaced by a sandwich shop. But not to worry, Chick-fil-A will be sticking around and adding a breakfast option. I asked Dr. Matt Baker what he was most excited about. Uh, I'm always a big fan of, of something fresh. Um, so we're going to see some changes in the Bearcat Commons with the You Cook Kitchen. Um, I'm, we're looking forward to some changes in just the, the seating and the carpet. Um, it's not going to change that much, but there's going to just be a new look after 10 years. We did a full renovation 10 years ago, and I'm a fan of, of just that refresh. Um, I do think one of the things I'm excited about, not necessarily on the food side, but just on the business side, the reduction in the meal plan costs for student who lives on, students who live on campus I think is important. I also spoke with a student about what they were most excited for. Definitely Kadoba, just because I feel like everyone has wanted either a Chipotle or Kadoba, something like that, on campus for a while, or just off campus in Maryville. And the fact that we're getting that in the union is just so convenient, so great. With these new changes, the Northwest Dining will look a little different next school year. For the stories that matter to you, this has been Tristan Clark with Channel 8 News. As mentioned, the Ghost Kitchen allows customers to order meals online, which can be delivered by KiwiBots. 
In addition to the retail venue changes, Mongolian Grill and the Bearcat Commons will change into a You Cook kitchen this summer, in which students will have the option to prepare their own meals and participate in cooking classes. Tuk Tuk food trucks will be added to provide campus catering services. Northwest Curtain Agreement with Aramark will end on May 15th and all meal swipes and dining dollars must be used before that date. Last week, Northwest Wellness Services hosted an engaged training program in which participants respond and reflect on certain situations they encounter. Riley Westfall reports. Throughout the spring, Wellness Services will be offering training sessions in the student union to help coach students on methods of violence prevention. Each session will be between 60 and 90 minutes and will focus on reducing harm on campus related to alcohol and drug use, bias and discrimination, violence, and suicide and mental health. I spoke with Isabel Talkington, the Northwest Wellness Educator, to understand more about what goes on during these training sessions and how they can help Northwest students. Engage is the new violence prevention program here on campus, and so it replaced Green Dot. So Engage is meant to be more focused on the intersectionality of not only um, sexual assault and domestic violence, but also drug use, acts of bias and discrimination, as well as mental health and suicidality. Um, so it's definitely a much more broader um, approach and focuses less specifically on just violence, but how we can prevent violence through building community and a sense of belonging. So during the trainings, um, we have, beforehand we get the folders ready, we have stickers to share, we have fidget toys, um, but this training, we really go into discussions about how students um, would respond to search certain situations. Um, so we go through the scenarios and we have quite a bit of discussion, and then we go through the CARES acronym. So this is different ways that students can respond and intervene and potentially harm harmful situations. Um, so the really cool thing about the Engage program is that it's multi-leveled. Um, so there is an introductory online training that takes around 20 to 30 minutes. There's in-person um, training um, sessions that are 60 to 90 minutes. Um, it depends on the session um, and we're offering both to the public. And then um, coming soon, fall 2023, we will be offering deeper dive sessions. Um, so this is an opportunity, say that you have an interest um, in alcohol or other drugs, we're gonna dive deeper into that topic. Um, so then you can come to a training specifically on that topic. Um, and so that'll be coming in fall 2023. So we're really excited for that. Um, and we have more and more resources coming as we continue to implement this program. The next Engage session will be held on Friday, February 24th in the Tower View Room of the Student Union from 3 to 4.30 p.m. To learn more or to register for a training session, you can contact Isabel Talkington at iStewart at northwestmissouri.edu. Until next time, this has been Riley Westfall with Channel 8 News. Thanks, Riley. In other news, Northwest hosted multiple musical performances and festivals last week, including a faculty recital at the Olive Duluth Fine Arts Building. Here's a performance. Northwest had a faculty recital showcasing Kyle Jones on the saxophone and Dr. Jiwon Choi on the piano in the Olive Duluth Fine Arts Building last Wednesday. Jones started his teaching career at Northwest at the start of fall 2022. He started playing saxophone in the sixth grade and got into college, practicing more. With his time at college, he realized he wanted to teach students. He is now adjunct constructor of saxophone at Northwest. Uh, it was excellent. It was a program that was deeply personal to me. Um, it was really nice after giving a couple of performances of this program off campus to then bring it home and share it with my faculty colleagues as well as some students in the audience. So, so thankful I got a chance to do it. Choi, the pianist at the recital, is a staff accompanist here at Northwest. She collaborates with the university choirs, vocal and instrumental studios, student pianists, music faculty, and guest artists. Richardson, one of the attendees, reflected on the performance and explained more details about the faculty recitals. Kyle Jones is a fantastic player. Um, he's a great teacher here and it was a very, um, the performance had a lot of new music and it was really exciting to hear that. A lot of, well, all the pieces were new to me. I hadn't ever heard those before, so it was fantastic. It was a faculty recital on campus. Students should come, even if you're not a music student. Um, you know, it's just a great, a great way to experience the arts 
here in the Fine Arts Building, uh, we have visual art as well. So I know that they're, um, they're doing um, a gallery opening here this coming week. Um, that's really, really fantastic. But yeah, there are tons of great performances and we look forward to having students um, attend as many of them as they wish to. For stories that matter to you, this has been Alexis Kuhner of Channel 8 News. Not only did faculty play this past week, but one class on campus has been working with Northwest Jazz Ensemble by recording and mixing their performance. Euler Postsemi has more. <laughs> If you have a passion for music, especially instrumental, and also want to learn more about audio techniques and acquire knowledge on the process of recording live concerts, for example, this class may be a great option for you. Live Sound Theory is taught by Alex Kurt, and its focus is to provide students with the opportunity to transfer and apply the audio technology and studio information from class into the area of live sound. I talked to some students to get their opinion in the class and what they have been up to so far in the semester. I like everything about this class. We get to record live like bands. It's not a rock band or anything like that, but we're learning how to record live bands and we could really use all these skills once we graduate or even before we graduate if we decided to, you know, do a live sound system or run live sound for anybody. It's just super cool to me. I also talked to Garrett Bevins, another student in the class, about his opinions on live sound theory. As for live sound practice, yeah, the best person, honestly, I know I'm a video guy, but it's kind of interesting seeing how everything sound related works. It kind of just helps with just setup in general when it comes to just productions. Obviously, sound and video are two different things, but at the same time, they're both equally as important to learn about. I know for sound, really, I don't know a whole lot about equalizing or like levels of audio and a whole lot, and there's like really good equipment that we use that can help out with that. And it's just nice to know that I can get my hands on it and just work with it. So even if you're more of a video person, this class still helps you understand a lot of important aspects of a production and can definitely be a skill you might need in your future career. If you are interested on the class, don't forget to check on CatPaws to have more information about when the class is offered. Thanks, Euler. Well, that's all the time we have for Channel 8 News. Be sure to click on the links below to rewatch certain sections of our show, as well as some upcoming events here at Northwest. We also want to hear from you, so leave a comment below on these stories, and be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for all the latest news and updates, as well as other content on our YouTube page at KNWT-TV. For the stories that matter to you, this has been Channel 8 News. Thanks for watching. Click those two videos on the right to watch some of our content as well as our past episodes. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and follow us on all our platforms.